In today's video, we will be discussing people's top financial errors, especially in their 20s. I'll discuss my own experience with each of these mistakes, as well as some others who have committed the same mistakes. I sincerely hope you'll find this video to be helpful. Please let us know by giving it a like and click the subscribe button. Let's begin. Number 1. Skipping the 401k contribution I consider the most significant error people make, especially when they're young, is to forego making any 401k contributions. In all honesty, I can't hold youth responsible for this error because the root cause is a lack of education explaining the meanings of 401k, compound interest, and how everything fits together. Just because the educational system failed to teach you about this one doesn't mean it's not a very essential thing for you. How serious is this issue? Well, a Money Under 30 survey reveals that 51.6% of millennials are not making 401k contributions. Most millennials and other people aren't investing anything for retirement in their 401k, which astounds me. And in 20, 30, or 40 years, when this generation of young people is ready to retire and questioning why they don't have money to retire, this will become a huge issue. We need to realize that compound interest is what we refer to as the time worth of money in this situation. You must give it a lot of time for your money to grow into a significant sum. Here's an example. Let's imagine you choose to make $100 a week and put that in your 401k contributions, which is not a lot of money. That amounts to perhaps one or two dining out experiences per day. Not a lot of money is being discussed here. Let's assume you make $100 weekly and have an average return of 8% annually over a very long period. Let's imagine someone decides to do it between the ages of 20 and 65. People who do this would have $1.86 million by the time they were 65, a significant retirement fund and a significant sum of money. On the other hand, what if one of their buddies decides, well, what do you know, I won't begin doing it until I'm 30 years old. Thus, rather than making it from 20 to 65, they're going to go for 30 to 65. You'll only have $827,000 available. That's almost a million dollar difference. This is why starting early is key. It's not essential how much money you invest, but how long you give your money to grow. Therefore, if you're young and know that you're not making contributions to your 401k, that is a crucial thing you should be doing when you can. I hope you're at least open to the concept. At the absolute least, I usually advise people to maximize their employer's matching contributions if they do so. It's basically free money. They frequently match payments up to a specific amount. One of my old employers would match 50% up to 3% of my 401k contributions so I could contribute 6% of my wage and receive 3% for free. It's free money. But so many people aren't utilizing it. My head's simply blown away by it. Number 2. Investing in an expensive car I've done this on my own. And having a showy car caused me to lose $9,480 in a single year. The frightening part of this is that I purchased a 2007 model automobile back in I think 2016. So even though this automobile was 9 years old, I still managed to lose just about $10,000 in a single year mainly due to paying too much for it before trading it in. I essentially made every error in the book when it comes to purchasing a car. It can result in significant financial losses for you. Cars are what you would call a depreciating asset. The assets you should put your money in should appreciate, like real estate, stocks, crypto, and bonds. While a car is technically an asset, I really want to look at it as a liability. Don't make the mistake of buying a brand new or expensive vehicle. You'll end up upside down on that car to the point where the amount you owe is greater than the vehicle's value. You'll be stuck making car payments for years to come on a vehicle that's not even worth what you paid for it. Now, you could be thinking, I want to share with you guys my opinion on how much money you should be spending on a car. Which is that your entirely monthly vehicle expenses, including your insurance of your car payment, shouldn't be more than 10% of your pre-tax monthly income. Although this is a rather conservative estimate, I can almost certainly assure you that I will keep you out of difficulty regarding your car bills. Assuming that your pre-tax income was $5,000 per month, your estimated total automobile expenses would be $500. So maybe your monthly insurance costs $100 and your automobile payment is $400. Things become tricky when you see someone making $3,000 before taxes each month with a monthly vehicle price of $800. It just doesn't make sense financially. Number 3. Getting into debt with student loans Taking out student loans is the third most costly financial error people in their 20s make. I'm not saying that attending college is always a bad idea. I attended college. Although I'm not using my two-year degree in electrical construction, which I obtained to make YouTube videos, it still cost me $12,000 over two years. Fortunately, I didn't have to go into debt from college because I received some funding from my grandfather, but not people have the same luxury. 
I chose community college to keep costs as low as possible. The issue is, when students enroll in college, they gain what I refer to as a non-marketable skill, something that isn't particularly helpful, a degree that will prevent you from earning a respectable living, will leave you in debt. In some circumstances, debt in the six figures with a degree won't bring you any income. Simply put, from my financial standpoint, it's illogical to do this. Being active in skilled crafts such as being a plumber, electrician, or carpenter is something I frequently discuss on this channel. These talents don't require you to attend college or incur debt, but still enable you to earn a sizable income depending on where you live and how good you are. Never will you think, oh my god, I need to study art history. People just don't think about it because it's not a skill that will be extremely in high demand. It is both the necessity for and demand for that service. Again, plumbing is not for everyone, but is an excellent trade in order. So when you genuinely need a plumber, you have to dig deep into your pockets and part with some cash. Number 4. This might be a little controversial, but it's having pets. I have pets, but one of the worst financial blunders people make in their 20s is getting a pet. I'm not saying you shouldn't get a pet, just be financially smart with it. If you carefully calculate your costs, these will cost you around $1,000 above. Using two cats as an example, I would estimate that I roughly spend $25 per month on food, $40 per month on kitty litter, and $120 per month on pet insurance. You're not required to have pet insurance, but it is a personal preference of mine to pay for pet insurance rather than incur these unforeseen costs. Shots, vaccines, spaying, and anything else are covered. My monthly expenses, including pet rent at my apartment, come to $210 per month. For some people, that amount of money is a sizable sum of change, so it's something to keep in mind when purchasing a pet. Now that amount of money is not at all that much for me, as a general rule of thumb, a pet costs about $150 per month. You also have to consider that if you don't get pet insurance, there may be unforeseen expenses along the way, and you should be planning for those, so I don't have to end up putting it on a credit card. All I'm saying is, buying a pet without considering the long-term costs of owning one can be a substantial financial burden for people. Personally, I want to give my pets the best life ever, and I can do so when I have enough money. Number 5. Avoiding Risk This might sound a little strange to you at first. Perhaps you're concerned that you lose money if you risk your money, yet taking a chance can be one of the best things you can do in life. I'm talking about calculated risks, of course. I'm not talking about playing the lottery here. I'm talking about something that crosses your path that might not seem like the proper thing to do on paper, but you decide to do it nevertheless because you have so many years ahead of you to make up for that risk. And to illustrate what I mean by this, I want to tell you guys my story about that. I did what I claimed about completed a two-year electrical construction degree. For over two years, I was employed by the neighborhood power company, which generally detested my employment. I began this small YouTube channel on the side because I did not enjoy my daily tasks at all. I was doing financial videos in my room, drawing things on a whiteboard, and enjoying myself. I then remarked, you know what, I would love it if this is what I did every day. I wrote down my ideas and created YouTube videos to entertain and to educate people. When I looked at the figures, I saw that while I was making roughly $60,000 at work at the time, my YouTube channel was only bringing in less than $1,000 a month. Therefore, monetarily, leaving a union job with excellent benefits would not make sense. Earning 60 k a year guarantees 6 figures within 5 years. However, I still decided I didn't want to continue doing this, so I put everything into my YouTube channel. You can't always think about everything in terms of numbers and a piece of paper. You must consider what you will love doing at the end of the day, and as a young person, you shouldn't be scared to take some risks. To me, avoiding danger means a severe financial error that many individuals make and that I almost made myself. And that is the end of today's video. I believe these are the top 5 financial blunders you should stay clear of in your financial journey. Please comment below if you've made any of these mistakes or have anything to add to the list. I would love to hear your thoughts guys. I sincerely appreciate you watching this video, I hope you liked it. I'll see you with the following one.